A lot of my subscribers have asked my thoughts on the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare multiplayer reveal that just took place. Unfortunately, I have no footage of the actual gameplay to show you guys. No one asked me to come get a sneak peek at the game early. Apparently, you need at least 60,000 subscribers or so to be in that caliber of elite. Anyway, I've got some ghost footage to talk over instead. If you want to know my class loadout for the gameplay, please check the video description. So I'm extremely excited about this new game. Of course, I always am around this time of year. My Koner, which is a Call of Duty boner, grows ever increasing when new information about an upcoming COD game gets released. I'm probably one of the few YouTubers that actually enjoys playing Call of Duty Ghosts. Do I find it boring? Yes, at times, but I still play it with the same enthusiasm as I did on day one. So naturally, this reveal was absolutely amazing for me. Let me talk about a few things I noticed that I haven't heard much about yet. The parabolic microphone attachment. So as you all should know, it's very common to see a lot of people utilize the silencer in Call of Duty games. Most people want to stay off the minimap. In Advanced Warfare, this new attachment, the parabolic microphone, allows you to hear sounds that the human ear can't hear. So it's the counter to the suppressor. Someone who uses a silenced weapon will now show up on the minimap if you're using this parabolic microphone. Next is what is being called the Combat Readiness Program. Sledgehammer's co-founder Michael Condry says that new players may feel a bit uneasy with all the new features in Advanced Warfare, so they developed this mode. It's like a training mode you can participate in. It's low intimidation. There are no kill cams and no chat, which means no one to yell at you. You get gifted score streaks, so he says, that you can play around with them and figure them out. You do not earn XP in this mode, though. So there's no reason for people to be in this mode except to learn how to play. You'll play with a combination of other players who are learning and also some bots that you can practice and master the maps against. Next, he mentions that they are including a traditional playlist. So if you and your friends want to go join in and just play traditional team deathmatch, you can play that without the boost jump. You have that option. He mentioned that very few people in the Sledgehammer studio play that anymore though, because once you got used to the boost controls, you just didn't want to go back. Next we have the supply drops, which I'm really excited about. These apparently are earned by completing challenges and just playing the game. This has a bit of an RPG aspect to it. You earn the equivalent of a big treasure chest and randomly pull out some loot, which includes weapons, gear, and care packages of varying rarity. Getting rare items simply by luck is a thrill to me. The next feature I want to talk about is called the firing range. Basically, it's a virtual targeting range that will allow players to immediately test weapons and attachments between matches without exiting the lobby. This is extremely handy for seeing whether you want to equip any of your new gear without jumping out of the game. This is one feature I cannot wait for. So as most of you should know, I hate the panic knife. It was extremely prevalent in Ghosts, but not here, or so I think at least. The default melee looks to be some kind of butter hook that isn't panicable. Panicable? Is that, is that a word? <laughs> I don't know. I saw at least three people try to panic someone in the gameplay I was watching, only to have a tiger uppercut happen, which resulted in a whiff and then they got killed. So it's more of an uppercut than a knife lunge. I saw that Danger Close is back, but we'll see how this plays out. I honestly don't see it being that big of an issue. Danger Close only increases the damage inside the same blast radius. It doesn't extend the blast radius. With movement being so quick, especially with the double jump and dash, I see it being very easy for people to avoid explosives. However, with the lethal piece of equipment called the Explosive Drone, paired with Danger Close, things may get hairy. The description of this Explosive Drone says, a proximity triggered drone that tracks enemies and explodes when near them. To sum it up, it's a grenade that is basically a flying RC car on autopilot. Hopefully, the trophy system will stop this, but we don't know yet. We'll see how it pairs with Danger Close and if people abuse this. So Michael Condry also stated that balance was and is a huge factor in the development of advanced warfare. Now that's what I want to hear. For example, each custom weapon in the new loot system that I just referred to has a stat change that makes it unique. But for every plus given to that weapon, there's also a negative. So you might have a weapon, for example, that has plus one in mobility, but it will also have a negative one in range. So you give up a bit of range to get slightly quicker mobility. That concept is present throughout. For every advantage one custom choice gives you, there's a disadvantage that keeps it balanced. And for every offensive perk, there's a defensive counter to it. Balance should be spot on for this game. At least, here's hoping. 
All right, let's do some rapid fire mode now. Let's cover a few more things. The exo movements will add a skill gap Call of Duty has never seen before. The maps are more like Black Ops 2 than Ghosts, although they seem to have four to five lanes and not just three. While Ghost was a very SMG centric game, Advanced Warfare seems to be favoring the ARs right now. Time to Kill seems to be in between Ghost and Black Ops 2. Based on the trailers, I've heard a lot of people complain that the Time to Kill looks super fast, so we'll see how this works. Next, the sheer amount of customization is insane. I've listed all the perks and score streaks in the description of this video for you guys to check out. There's also a fast reload mechanic that's supposedly in the game. If you double tap reload, it's a fast reload option, however, you lose any unused bullets in the magazine. This sounds incredible. Again though, we'll see how this pans out. Of course, there's new game modes like Uplink, which seems to be a football variation, and Momentum, which is a war variation, should be really fun. It looks like there's unlimited sprint by default. Most people have asked for this for the past few Call of Duty games, and it's finally going to happen. It also looks like they removed IEDs as well as C4. Cloaking has been confirmed, but I guess we'll see how the community utilizes this before making judgments. It looks like some tracker or target finder type sites are back, plus a new special grenade that shows where people are in red outline. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to utilize these, but again, we'll see how it plays out. This last one, the ping indicator, a lot of people are excited for. It doesn't do anything for me, but that's the ping indicator that shows you if you're lagging or not. You know, like the three bars or the four bars that were in Black Ops 2? So that makes a return. So the bottom line, this looks fun as hell. I think camping should go down, but there undoubtedly would still be some. Complete map freedom is pretty exciting. It was always pretty dumb that you could mantle a seven foot wall, but not a three foot barrel. I think that regardless of how well this game does, at the very least, it'll be a refreshing change of pace. Of course, all that can change once everyone has the game and gets a feel for the best way to be a cheese dick asshole. So now I just need to decide what system to get this on. I can't wait to bring you guys help videos for Advanced Warfare. It sounds like the supply drops will come from completing challenges. And when you want to complete a challenge, who do you turn to? Tabor time.